Lately, I've been focusing on the important things in life. Things like graham crackers and vanilla wafers, and now it's ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, I know it's fattening, but spring's just around the corner. I'll work it off. <laughs> and it wasn't until I made these that I realized just how little taste the actual ice cream wafers have in them. These cookies are excellent. They taste like brownies. And uh, I wouldn't say these taste just like ice cream sandwiches that you buy. I'd say they taste better. And this isn't the first recipe I've tried. I tried another one, and it tasted like cocoa-flavored slate. Uh, these are real good, and even if you don't want to make ice cream sandwiches, be sure to give this uh, cookie recipe a try. They taste like brownies. They're real good. So here's how I did it, and I got this recipe from a website called Smitten Kitchen, and I only used half a recipe, and it made 11 ice cream sandwiches, and I can't imagine anybody would want to make more than that at one time. So I'm going to put the ingredients for half a recipe in the description box. The first thing I did was creamed a stick of butter and three quarters cups of sugar. Then I added one egg and half a teaspoon of vanilla, and mix that together thoroughly. Then I added a third cup of cocoa and mixed that all in well. In another bowl, I mixed together one and a half cups of white lily all-purpose flour, an eighth a teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And I mixed that all together thoroughly. Then I added the dry mixture into the wet mixture a little at a time and mixed it up thoroughly. And some of the comments on this recipe on that website said they had problems with the dough turning out too dry and it wouldn't pull together, but it turned out fine for me. And a lot of other people said it turned out fine for them. So if it turns out too dry for you, then add a little bit of milk. You're supposed to refrigerate this for an hour, but I didn't. I found it's easier for me to work with a rolling pin if it's not refrigerated. So I poured the dough onto a floured surface and rolled it out to a quarter inch thick. Then I cut out the dough with a large biscuit cutter. And someone said that if you wanted a real crisp definition to your cutouts to make sure that the dough was well refrigerated. Then I poked holes in the top with a bamboo skewer, and I don't know if this is even necessary, but it wouldn't look right without it. And don't worry about any flour on the cookies because that ends up baking off of them. Then I baked them at 350 on a greased cookie sheet for 9 minutes. Cool the cookies on a wire rack. Now for the tricky part. Be sure that you are well organized and set up so that you can do this very fast because that ice cream melts quickly. I cut ice cream into slices and then I cut circles out of the ice cream with a biscuit cutter and then sandwich them together. I put the scraps of the ice cream into little cups and put them back in the freezer. And as I would make these, I would put the sandwiches in the freezer as fast as I could. So make sure you have plenty of room in your freezer when you do this. To cut down on the scrap, I ended up cutting half circles out of the extra big pieces there and putting them on the cookies. So that's it. I ended up with 11 ice cream sandwiches and I wrapped them in wax paper and then I covered that with aluminum foil and put them in the freezer. So that's how I made ice cream sandwiches. These cookies end up just the right texture. They're not too hard and they're not too soft. Hope it helps.